Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And we're going to continue looking at Daniel chapter 11, though I am wanting to move ahead. Um, but I'm just going to go back uh, to verse 22 and, and that. And then we're going to start looking at verse 23. And then we will come back after we've gone through this history, because it's going to go through some of this history, the Battle of Actium and so forth. And we're going to try to understand how this is set up. Okay, so before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your Spirit's presence to be here as we open your word together. We know, Lord, that um, uh, we have slowly been going through these scriptures, seeking for light. And um, we just ask for your Spirit's presence here, that you can continue to teach us and lead us. Uh, we pray for one another. We pray for those searching for truth. We pray for your angels' care and protection. And we ask, Lord, that we can obey your voice and that we can reflect your character to all around us. And we thank you for this time, again, that we have here. May your spirit's presence be here as we study and discuss these things. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, so um, yesterday... Uh, 16th of January was the anniversary of um, Augustus becoming emperor. So it's going to be on January 16th, 27 BC. So you, you add 27 to 24, right? So you're going to get 2051, but you have to subtract one because there's zero in the math, but there's no zero BC AD. So, so yesterday was that anniversary. We missed it yesterday. You know, we could have addressed it. So anyway, that's just a sort of a bit of a side note. And, um, so one of the things that we ran into as we were studying through, um, these verses, right? So there's stuff there that we don't understand yet. Now we know. At least we understand in the, the pioneer interpretation of this this passage that this is addressing Julius Caesar, Augustus, and Tiberius, and that this is all going to be in the context of the cross, right? So the reason why I believe that this is not continuing like the history of Atticus Epiphanes and so forth um, is that uh, this is addressing these this time. So in the time of Julius Caesar, we're going to have the cross introduced, and then um, it's going to come all the way up to the cross, right? So it's going to deal with uh, the crucifixion of Christ. And then it's going to go back, right? So it's going to go back to a previous time, which we're going to have this Jewish league beginning in 161 BC. Um, and we know that is... Uh, 158 BC as well. And I wish Stephen was here because I know he knows some of this history a little bit better than I do. Um, but, you know, in the book of Maccabees, it's going to talk about this and maybe we should look in a little more detail so that we can establish why we choose 158 BC over 161. But both are valid, right? So both, because uh, the league is first gone into in 161, it's going to be, in a sense, ratified or put into effect in 158 BC. Um, so, uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this Jewish league, and this is going to be, of course, the Jews making this league with pagan Rome, and pagan Rome is going to work deceitfully, right? And it's going to be using this league for furthering the Roman interests in the eastern regions. Um, and he's, there's going to be the siege that comes in 63 BC. So that's uh, Pompey's siege of Jerusalem. And that's really when Jerusalem uh, becomes part of the Roman Empire. They become um, captive, you know, in a sense, uh, against their will, they become part of the Roman Empire. And uh, so then you're going to see uh, Rome enter peaceably upon the fattest places of the province, that's Syria, Judea, and Egypt, and he shall do. 
that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. And uh, Swearingen puts this as Titus's destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches um, and the Jewish people after the destruction of Jerusalem. It's going to be the dispersion of them. Yeah, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds. So this is going to be the persecution of Christians, according to Swearingen, even for a time. So this is going to mark a period of time from the Battle of Actium in 31 BC uh, to AD 330. So when persecution uh, is going to um, sort of be alleviated for because of Constantine. So this is pretty much the standard um, view that we have had in regard to these things. And why is that not working? So <clears throat> we're going to look at this. So let's take a look at this league. Um, now, first, we're going to just look at what Uriah Smith says. Um, so we'll go to his commentary. Okay. Uh, Rome makes a league with the Jews. The hymn with whom the league is made must be the same power which has been the subject of the prophecy from the 14th verse, the Roman Empire. That this is true has been shown in the fulfillment of the prophecy in the three individuals who successively ruled over the empire, Julius, Augustus, and Tiberius Caesar. Now that the prophet was has taken us through the secular events of the Roman Empire to the end of the 70 weeks. He takes us back to the time when the Romans became directly connected with the people of God by the Jewish League in 161 BC. From this point, we are then taken through a direct line of events to the final triumph of the church and the setting up of God's everlasting kingdom. Grievously oppressed by the Syrian kings, the Jews sent an embassy to Rome to solicit the aid of the Romans and to join themselves in a league of amity and confederacy with them. The Romans listened to the request of the Jews and granted them a decree couched in these words. The decree of the Senate concerning a league of assistance and friendship with the nation of the Jews, it shall not be lawful for any that are subject to the Romans to make war with the nation of the Jews, nor to assist those that do so either by sending them corn or ships or money. And if any attack be made upon the Jews, the Romans shall assist them as far as they are able. And again, if any attack be made upon the Romans, the Jews shall assist them. And if the Jews have a mind to add to or to take away anything from this league of assistance, that shall be done with the common consent of the Romans. And whatsoever addition shall thus be made, it shall be in force. This decree was written by Eupolemus, the son of John, and by and by Jason, the son of Eliezer, when Judas was high priest of the nation, and Simon, his brother, was general of the army. And this was the first league that the Romans made with the Jews and was managed after this manner. Right. So that's going to be from Josephus, this last part, and to antiquities of the Jews. And in this first quote here, the League of Amity and Confederacy with them is taken from uh First Maccabees chapter eight and, and Humphrey Prideaux, the Old and New Testament. So it's his version of it. So, <clears throat> so we had looked at this League of the Jews, um, and, and found some interesting things when we were studying the book of the book of Judges. Uh, the one thing that we found, uh, that was interesting, uh, when is the first league, uh, made um, when do the Jews first make their league as, you know, after they have uh, become the Jews, so to speak, the Israelites as a nation? So they're going to make a league with who? Who's their first league that they have? Anybody remember? So this is going to be after uh, they have conquered Jericho. They're going to make a league. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so they're going to make a league uh, with the Gibeonites. And you can see in this chart here, we have this 1,335 years that is going to reach to 158 BC. Now, it's interesting 
when we look at the 161 BC date, that that period of time is going to be obviously 1,332 years, three years less. And 1,332, six times six times six is um, six times six, or not six, 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 six times two, pardon me, is 1,332 years. So you're going to have that 1,335 years between the first league with the Gibeonites and then the league made with the Jews in 161, it's going to be 1332, and then to the league going into effect in 158 is 1335 years. And then Miller had 666 years from that league to 508. And then we're going to notice there's from 508, there's uh, 1666 times two years to 1840, and then the extra three years to 1843 when the second angel arrives, right? So that's going to be, um, we put it there as the second angel arriving at the end of the Jewish year, 1843. So obviously it's in 1844, but, and then we have um, from that first league to 508 is going to be 201 years, because that's really six times, 666 times three plus three is 2001. And then from 158 BC to 1843 is also 2001 years. And then you have 158 years from 1843 to 2001. That's when the second angel arrives. So this, uh, this chart, I believe, was made by Stephen. So that's why it's nice and neat and clean. And um, uh, so, we, so we have this symbol of the 1335, which we're going to have to keep in mind and its connection with this league. Okay. Now, as far as these, um, these references here, so um, we have this league that the Jews make. And it's going to be, let me see, what was the reference they gave us here? Um, so Josephus, Book 12, Chapter 10, Section 6. So I'm going to go there to see if I can get this to work. Okay, so there's a lot of this history we may not be that familiar with, and we're going to try to, to fill in this history. Um, so, and, and I'm, I'm only sketchingly familiar with it. So I can't remember who Bacchides is. I mean, he's the general of Demetrius's army, but I'm not sure who Demetrius is. Um, I believe these, this is, of course, the Roman army. I, I think, no, I don't think this is, I think this is, um, trying to remember. So this is the Seleucid. So he's the son of Seleucus. Um, so yeah, this is in this, so this is dealing with the end of Greece. Okay. So Demetrius is the son of Seleucus. Okay. About that same time, Demetrius, the son of Seleucus, fled away from Rome and took Tripoli, the city of Syria, and set the diadem on his own head. He also gathered certain mercenary soldiers together and entered into his kingdom. I'm going to make this a little bigger. This is not um, and was joyfully received by all who delivered themselves up to him. And when they had taken, uh, I think that should be Antiochus the king and Lys Lysias, they brought them to him alive, both which were immediately put to death by the command of Demetrius. And when Antiochus had reigned two years, as we have already elsewhere related, but there were now many of the wicked Jewish runagates who, uh, that came together to him, and with them, Al Alchemist, the high priest, who accused the whole nation, and particularly Judas and his brethren, and said that they had slain all his friends, and that those in his kingdom that were of his party and waited for his return, were by them put to death, that these men had ejected them out of their own country, and caused them to be sojourners in a foreign land, and they desired that he would send some of his own friends and know from him what mischief Judas' party had done. 
Okay, so I don't know if I fully all understand all of this. I know alchemists, when he dies, um, he's the high priest. There's going to be seven years that they don't have a high priest. And I'm trying to remember uh, the chronology of this um, as far as the dates. They're not giving you dates because it's obviously uh, Josephus doesn't know uh, the dates on our calendar. Um so he's going to be um, the high priest for Israel from 162 B.C. to 159 B.C. So it's right in that, that history, 161 to 158. And, and um, now, uh, if you go from the death of Alchemist, it is 666 cardinal years to 508 And one of the things I had looked at before was thinking, well, you know, what if we use 159 BC for the start of those 666 years that Miller had? Um, The thing that you have is you have uh, the taking away of the daily, which is going to be this, um, uh, you know, this mark of the end of paganism in 508. Um, Paganism, a counterfeit of the earthly sanctuary. And, of the death of Alchemist in 159, that's sort of an end of the earthly sanctuary, so to speak. There's a seven year period where they don't have a high priest. But, um, uh, and th- there might be something to that, right? That, that sort of parallel there. So, so anyway, he's going to be this high priest in this period of time. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, let me go back here. Uh, and then we have, um, so you've got, uh, this, um, guy back, he, what was his name? Back, yes, back, back at ease, which I'm not really familiar with. I'm just going to look him up. Okay, back at ease. So he's a general. I'm just going to read a little bit about him. Um, his, the main source on Maccabees is the book First Maccabees. Uh, the work was written, and we're going to look at First Maccabees, uh, written in the Hasmonean Kingdom after the success of the Maccabean revolt against the Seleucid Empire. Okay. So we're going to get a different date here. According to chapter... Okay, no, this is right. Uh, according to chapter 7, Demetrius sent Maccabees in 161 BC to Judea with an army in order to invest alchemists, with the high office of high priest of Israel. Its mission succeeded. The book of first Maccabees does not report any challenge to it, perhaps because the Maccabees were still rebuilding after their defeat at the battle of Beth Zechariah. Um, it says here in first Maccabees nine, verse one and two. Hi, Stephen. When Demetrius heard that Nicanor and his army had fallen in battle, he sent Maccabees and Alchemus into the land of Judea, a second time, with them the right wing of the army. They went by the roads that lead to Gilgal and encamped against Mesaloth in Arbella, and they took it and killed many people. Now, um, so right now, Stephen, we're looking at this uh, history of uh, the League. So we jumped ahead uh, to verse 23 of Daniel chapter 11. And... Um, uh, I'm glad you're here because I know you know a bit more about this. So, so after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall be strong with the small people. So, we know that this is going to be Rome, right? After and and and, and it's kind of interesting how uh, Uriah Smith puts this description because what we see is after we have had these. Emperors, well, first starting with Julius Caesar, then Augustus, and then um, Tiberius, uh, we're going to have, we're going to go back to this history and go over it again. So I've been studying some of this history. I haven't studied this in detail. I'm going to have to spend a bit of time with this. Now, as far as just quickly, Stephen, so with the League, how is it that we, we establish 158 B.C.? So we have alchemists who's put 
in as high priest. Uh, we have some conflicting dates. So 162 uh, in Wikipedia, uh, 161 in um, uh, Wikipedia as well, just depending where which article we're reading. So, do you know? Do you, can you comment on any of that? Well, your your ass Matthew's getting one six one for the league. Is that right? Um, yeah, he can be one for the league. Yes. So uh, first might be nine seventy. Yeah. And seventy one is what is referenced in the chart. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought that's the correct one fifty. It is the correct date for that. Um, right. But what? Uh, what, what I sort of found was I couldn't really justify what William Miller said happened. Right. You know, from from the Book of Maccabees. Unless he was getting some other information elsewhere. That, yeah, it, um, like he didn't quite understand it, but he had the right date. And I'm not sure how how to address that. Yeah, so it's the 152nd year in relation of the, the Greek period, I think it is. Yeah, so, so look, yeah the, so look the, Seleucid, uh, the Seleucid era. Yeah, so he says he established himself in Babylon in 312 BC. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the, the date then, so 152nd year uh, from that. Uh, yeah. It would take us to 161 BC in an ordinal count. Yeah. So, so we have 161. They're going to make a league in 161. But they, what happens in 158? So you're saying that that's in uh, First Maccabees uh, chapter nine, and which verse? Seventy and seventy-one is what is referenced on the chart. Yeah. It says, whereof when Jonathan had knowledge, he sent ambassadors unto him to the end. He should make peace with him and deliver them the prisoners. The thing he accepted and did according to his demands and swear unto him that he would never do him harm all the days of his life. So so this is going to be with Bacchides, right? So you're going to have. Um, so, so this when, is. Uh, yeah. What? So verses four to 53 uh, relates events. Of the Battle of Elasa between the outnumbered army of Judas Maccabees and the Greek general Bacchides, which results in Judas' death. Judas is then replaced by his brother Jonathan. And then yeah. verse 54 uh, tells us, moreover, in the 153rd year, in the yeah. second month, Alchemus commanded that the wall of the inner court, the sanctuary should be pulled down. He pulled uh, down also the works of the prophets. So the 153rd year would take us to 160 BC. And then okay. verses 55 to 57 says, And as he began to pull down the wall, down the wall, even at that time, Alchemist plagued, well, he, he was plagued, and his enterprises hindered, his mouth was stopped, and his tech had like a palsy. So he yeah. died. And then it says, Bacchides saw that Alchemus was dead. He returned to the king, whereupon the land of Judea was in rest two years. So then two years would then take us to 158 uh, BC. Mm -hmm. And then verses uh, 58 to 69, then relate that ungodly men recognizing Jonathan was and his company were at ease, mm -hmm. invited Bacchides and a host to take Jonathan and them with him. And uh, Bacchides responded and um, says he was wroth, the wicked man, um, and he slew them and proposed to return to his own country. And now we come to verses 70 to 71, as referenced in the 1843 chart. Yeah. It says, well, off Jonathan had knowledge, he sent ambassadors unto him. To the end, he should make peace with him and delivered the prisoners, which thing he accepted and did according to his demands and swear unto him that he would never do uh, him harm all the days of his life. So of note and reference is that we do not plainly see a league 
uh, between Rome and the Jews here. Um, yeah. But, but there's a kind of like a, I think the Jews are sort of saying, okay, well, we'll leave off fighting the Jews. So that's between Jonathan and, and uh, Bacchides, but it's not between Rome and the Jews in the sense here. So yeah, no. The movie, the movie Bacchides, sees from something took an effect. Yeah, Bac- so Bacchides is the general of the Seleucid army. Yes. Right. Okay. So, so we have a league here, but it's it's not particularly the league made with the Jews. You're saying. Yes. So, so how do we address that then? Because it is, it is on the 1843 chart. We know that there's a league made in 161 with Rome. And what's going to be happening is um, that there's this battle with Greece. The question is, how is this related to what's happened with the league with Rome? So what is Rome doing in this period of time? Because the Jews have made a league with Rome. How are we then having this league going into effect in 158? Is there any way that we can understand that? Well, what William Miller says that uh, this league was made between the Romans, Romans and the Jews, ratified and carried into effect when the Greeks under Bagades left besieging Jerusalem upon the command of the Romans as Joseph, Josephus, and Maccabees tell us, never returned to trouble them, the Jews, anymore. Okay. This league then took effect uh, when the third kingdom and Daniel's vision ceased harassing the Jews, and the fourth kingdom began its rule over the Jews in the world. That's what he says. Okay, so this well, is, it kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense. It's just not telling us that ex- uh, specifically. <laughs> No, we don't really see Rome interfering with Greeks telling them, look, we've made a, re- a league here with the Jews. We're going to have to back off. We don't get that from the, uh, from Maccabees. Now, he did reference there Josephus. So unless Josephus maybe said something. Yeah, um, what in Josephus was, um, well, let's go there again. Okay, so with Josephus, it's going to talk about um, um, this this battle here, and then and Demetrius, who's the son of Seleucus, uh, he sent back at he's a friend of Antiochus Epiphanes, a good man and one that had been entrusted with all Mesopotamia, and gave him an army and committed Alchemist the high priest to his care and gave him charge to slay Judas and those that were with him, right? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Basically, finding Maccabees. So Bacchides made haste and went out of Antioch with his army. And when he was coming to Judea, he sent to Judas and his brethren to discourse with them about a league of friendship and peace, for he had a mind to take him by treachery. But Judas did not give credit to him where he saw that he came with so great an army as men uh, do not bring when they come to make peace, but to make war. So any comments on this so far? Uh, no. Okay. So, I mean, this is, is Greece's league with, with the Jews, right? So what, uh, what uh, reference is that with Josephus? Uh, this is uh, Antiquities of the Jews, uh, Book 12, Chapter 10. And okay. uh, is there like a and, a section, and you're, is there a section six? Section six. Um, that's what I'm looking for. The section six. So the section six is going to talk about a week again. So it says, but now as the high priest alchemist was resolving to pull down the wall of the sanctuary, which had been there the whole time and had been uh, built by the holy prophets, he was smitten suddenly by God and fell down. This stroke made him fall down speechless upon the ground. And undergoing torments for many days, he at length died when he had been high priest four years. Now, they say four years. We got three years. um, Depends, I guess, how you're counting it. And when he was. Yeah, so that would align with 1 Maccabees 954. 
when that, yeah. so that would be the 153rd year, which would relate to 160 BC. Yeah. And uh, we see that Alchemist's death, after his death, the land had rest two years. Yeah. According to Maccabees. Yeah. And when he was dead, the people bestowed the high priesthood on Judas, who hearing of the power of the Romans and that they had conquered in war Galatia and Iberia and Carthage and Libya, and that besides these, they had subdued Greece and their kings, Perseus and Philip and Antiochus the Great also, he resolved to enter into a league of friendship with them. Um, he therefore sent to Rome some of his friends, Eupolemus, the son of John, and Jason, the son of Eleazar, and by them desired the Romans that they would assist them and be their friends and would write to Demetrius that he would not fight against the Jews. So the Senate received the ambassadors that came from Judas to Rome and discoursed with them about the errand on which they came and then granted them a league of assistance. They also made a decree concerning it and sent a copy of it into Judea. It was also laid up in the capital and engraven in brass. The decree itself was this, the decree of the Senate concerning the League of Assistance and Friendship with the Nation of the Jews shall not be lawful for any that are subject to the Romans to make war with the nations of the Jews, nor to assist those that do so, either by sending them corn ships. So this is going to be quoted by uh, Uriah Smith, but he's going to place this in 161. Yes. But this is in 158. Well... So it depends it's how. Not, well, once we well, had a, is this when he was there? So that's one sixty BC. Uh, when Alchemist dies? No, that's not. Well, that's when he gets sick. He's sick and he gets sick in one sixty, and then he's going to live for two more years. So he dies uh, late in one fifty nine BC, because he's going to become high priest in. 162 BC, right? And if he's high priest for four years, then that, that you know, if you just did a, a cardinal count, it'd be 158, but it's it's actually late in 159 that he dies. Is that not a discrepancy between what that says there and Maccabees? No. Where's the discrepancy? In Maccabees, they're going to have him be sick for two years before he dies. Well, no, um, right. So it says there in 57, um, I'll read 55 to 57. And as he began to pull down, even at that time, Alchemist plagued, Alchemist was plagued, and his enterprises hindered. For his mouth was stopped and he was taken with a palsy so that he could no more speak anything nor give order concerning his life. So Alchemist died at that time with great torment. Now Bagadis saw that Alchemist was dead. He returned to the king whereupon the land of Judea was in rest two years. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So I was reading that wrong. Now, the thing is, if you look up Alchemist, um, in in Wikipedia, it says he's going to be the high priest of Israel for three years from 162 to 159 BC. So that's what they have, mm-hmm. and and so so he definitely doesn't die in 160. Unless out there saying it's sort of backdating it some way. Uh, so it says there whereupon. So Alchemist was dead. He returned to the king whereupon the land of Judea was in rest two years. Maybe it's not. It's maybe including that period where he was ill. Uh, it just yeah. depends how you maybe read that, Maccabees. Because, yeah, I mean, he's going to have a stroke, right? So um, it, and it seems like well, it says that he was many days undergoing torments for many days. At length he died when he had been high priest four years. So it doesn't so, yeah, it's it's kind of obscure here. When he was dead, the people bestowed the high priesthood on Judas. Now, my understanding is that there's supposed to be seven years where there is no high priest. So I'm not sure. And, and that's the thing with, with Josephus. He does get some details wrong here and there. So um, 
because I, I read, I read, um, I had a book on this whole history, which I went through, uh, about, uh, four years ago. Um, and, uh, which was, which was really interesting. Uh, but I mean, I'd probably do better if I read it now because I'd have more background. But I'm trying to find this period of time. Okay, maybe I was getting the seven years backwards, I'm trying to figure this out. Stay on. Yeah, so there was no um, high priest among the Jews for seven years since the death of Alchemist. That's, that's a pretty standard view. Um, so they says Judas was made high priest, but I guess he doesn't really operate as high priest. So there's, there's stuff here that I still have to sort out. I'm not sure how to go about doing that. But this is definitely, this league is going to be not before this war. This league is going to be after this war, right? <laughs> with the war with Bacchides and... Yeah. So this league is made after the death of Alchemist, where if you're going to have it in 161, the league, that's going to be before the death of Alchemist, right? Mm -hmm. So so this league can't be the league that was in 161. This must be the league that's in 158. Well, Maccabees does give it as 161. The first so league. Because this isn't the same league as mentioned in Maccabees when it comes to that first league made with the Romans, they have that in 161, right? Because 161 comes before 158. And, and, and 161, Alchemist is still alive. Mm -hmm. you would that. So this, this league here is after Alchemist is dead. And Josephus, yes. Yeah. So, so they can't be the same league. That are being referred to. They can't be the same event. Unless Josephus is wrong. Yeah, you unless know. Josephus is wrong. But, but this is what, anyway, all I'm saying is this is what Josephus says, that it's after the death of Alchemist. Now, the thing is, Uriah Smith takes this and quotes this as if it's in 1, 161. So he quotes this league as being before Alchemist dies, when Alchemist is still high priest. But he doesn't, he doesn't really address why he does that. Right. So he's going to die and then they're going to get this assistance from the Romans. So it's going to have happen, happen after he dies. And I have him dying according to Wikipedia in 159. And as far as I can discern, that's going to be, you know, late in 159 based upon all the, the, the stuff that I looked at before, because I, I didn't really deal so much with this league, but I looked at Alchemist uh, when his years were. Um, so that's what we have. That we have the 161, which would basically be from um, Maccabees, that, that league that's mentioned there. And then we have this league here, which would be 158, which is mentioned in Josephus. And the question is, are they the same league? But is Josephus just wrong that it doesn't happen after the, the death of Alchemist? I mean, he is writing, you know, 100 and uh, two, like 200 years later. And, and we don't know what his source is, whether he's he's using just Maccabees or he has some other source. But, you know, Josephus's information is is only as good as his source. Unless he's there personally, which he is for the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. But, um, so he does get things wrong because these sources don't all agree with each other. It's not like we have a scripture that, you know, is inspired by God, uh, to understand this. But, you know, we, we know Maccabees, it's not an inspired book, but it is an important book to study. Um, but so, Uriah Smith must be thinking that this is just misplaced. I wish he would give us more reasoning behind why he chooses to mark this as 161. Mm -hmm. right. that's, that's all we have to go on. 
So whenever this league particularly is marked, whether this is going to be the 161 league or whether the 158 league, um, I, I think we have to say that there must be the two leagues, right? Right. So when he's going to, he's going to quote, uh, you know, Maccabees and then he's going to quote, um, a silver on the right side here. And then he's going to quote, uh, Josephus. And he quotes this decree, and this is the decree after the death of Alchemist. So that can't be the one in 161. And so he has us look at those references, which, um, and he has us look at first Maccabees verse chapter, or verse eight, chapter eight, which is, you now we were looking at Maccabees chapter nine. What's in chapter eight? I'm just going to go back. So what, what particularly is he? Referencing in chapter 8. So in chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Now Judas had heard of the Romans that they were mighty and valiant men, and as such would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them and make a league of amity with all that came unto them. So so it's going to start chapter 8, verse 1, and it's going to deal with this this league. Um, Just skimming through it. In verse 17, in consideration of these things, Judas chose Eupolemius, the son of John, the son of Akos, and Jason, the son of Eliezer, and sent them to Rome to make a league of amity and confederacy with them. So that's definitely the league in 161. Right? So in chapter 9, so when we go there, um, we don't, you're saying that we don't really have this league stated. This is going to be more uh, 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 this is going to be just talking about this, the, the war ending with peace between Greece and Rome. I mean, uh, Greece and the Jews. But it doesn't mention Rome. Right. As, as having a part to play there. But based upon what, um, Josephus says, then it would seem that, well, there is, it's just not stated in Maccabees. Right. The uh, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia uh, mentions the victory over Nicanor in, as in 161 BC. Nic- N- yeah, Nicanor or whatever his name is, Nicanor. Okay. Nicanor. <laughs> I always say Nicanor. Anyway, okay, whoever, yeah, this guy, yeah, what about it? In which uh, that engagement, so he was slain, Nicanor was slain, was the greatest of Judas's successes and practically secured the independence of the Jews. The attempt of Judas to negotiate, negotiate an alliance with the Romans, who had now serious interests in these regions, caused much dissatisfaction among his followers. And their defection at Ilassa in 161 BC yeah. during the invasion of Pagades, which was undertaken before the answer of the Roman Senate arrived, was the cause of the defeat and death of Judas in battle. Mm-hmm. There is no proof that Judas held the office of high priest like his father, Mattathias. Jonathan succeeded Judas, the first step towards the recovery of the patriarchs was the permission granted them by Demetrius I to return to Judea in 158 BC, the year in which Bagades ended an unsuccessful campaign against Jonathan. Okay. So that would tend to agree with what we're saying about what Josephus is saying. Would that, in your reading of it? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think well, there's more here. I don't I just want to check. Uh, so, yeah, so going back to what Josephus had told us, he related that the Jews desired the Romans, that they would assist them. And be their friends and would write to Demetrius that he would not fight against the Jews. It could therefore be that 
Demetrius was influenced at least to a certain degree by the league between the Jews and the Romans and Romans, and that the letters sent to him, if enacted by Rome, in his decision in his decision to return the patriarchs to Judea. Therefore this observation may faintly offer the prospect of the league going into effect in one fifty eight BC. But it's hard to pin down for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's hard to pin down for sure. But but I think I think it makes the most sense based on you know me reading that history and what you're looking at here. You know, so maybe maybe it's just that they renew that league with the Romans after the Greeks. You know, after that. Uh, war with the Greeks and then the Greeks don't bother them anymore now we know that Judean independence so so one of the things that Miller says you know I don't agree with is that because they made this league with the Jews that they're that they're not independent the fact that they made a league with the Jew or the Romans the Jews made a league with the Romans is the fact that they they could make that because they were an independent nation Right. That is. And they're gaining their independence from Greece. Now, you could say, well, they have a league with the Romans, so they're not truly independent. But the Romans really haven't conquered them. The Romans are just an ally. Right. So it's not going to be until 63 that, you know, Jerusalem is captured then by the Romans and is no longer independent. And a lot of the stuff I've read say the Judean independence is complete by 129 BC, right? So 666 years before 538. So anyway, that. But thanks for that, Stephen. That's very, very useful, very, very helpful. Um, I can uh, add this. I can send you a document. I don't know study on it. Okay. Okay, um, yeah, I can, yeah, okay. So so it is one of those things that, you know, it's always been a contentious issue um, because it's on the 1843 chart. There's been people who try, try to attack the 1843 chart saying, well, you know, the league was actually in 161, not 158. Um, you know, so you have all of those types of uh, arguments. Um, now, and and when it when it comes to um, you know the 666 years of Miller, then there's this criticism as well. Well, you know it's actually 665 years from 158 to 508. But of course, if you do an inclusive count, it is 666 years. And I do think that that was a valid observation that he had because of the 666 years that connect. Um, Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28 and the 666 years from Judean independence to 538. These three periods of 666 years, um, you know, become valid. And then when we go back to this chart, which I don't know when you came on, Stephen, but we're showing your chart that you made dealing with, um, that first league in 4 1493 BC and the 1335 years to 158 with all the 666 uh, symbols in that as well, right? Mm -hmm. So so I think, you know, this, and, and dealing with the arrival of the second angel in, in our history, both in Millerite history at the end of the Jewish year, 1843, and at 9-11 in 2001, right? So, so it's, it's a nice uh, chart, it, you know, it gives us a lot of information. And, and it is only valid if 161 BC and 158 BC are both uh, marking this league with of the Jews with the Romans. So the Roman Jewish League, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you know we just have to keep these things in mind. Um, you know we have something that was sort of given to us from Millerite history, and and the question you know when we look at it. Um, I mean, I don't think we 
could prove it necessarily 158. You know, we, you know, some people might say, well, maybe it was 159 that you have this sort of second league, or they could say Josephus just got it all wrong. But I think when you put it all together, it kind of does suggest that this is correct. Well, a- he's more suggesting it's going into effect. At yeah. That time, rather than. Yeah, not- be into- yeah, well, it, it'd be, I, I don't know, being into effect, may, maybe a type of ratification just because of the actions of what had happened, that they kind of renew the league with the Romans is what it seems like more when I read it. So that they, they make an initial league in 161, uh, the league of, league of Amity, right? And then, you know, they end up having this Rome with uh, war with the Greeks and, you know, it's not like the Romans come in and deliver them or anything. It's just uh, after that war, it, it just seems that they renew, according to Josephus, they just renew that league. So he focuses upon what happens after the death of Alchemist, after the, the war. Um, where in Maccabees, it's, it's focusing upon that initial league in 161. I mean, that's the way that we would have to take it. If, if it's correct that 158 is correct, that's how we would have to understand it. Okay. Can I accept? Yep. Yeah, okay. Dwight? So, question based on this. Mm-hmm. What if there was a change in leadership in Jerusalem between 161 and 158, and the change in leadership wanted to again reaffirm the League of Amity? Well, there is a change in leadership, but um, so that could be part of it. But but all we we have from this history is we have Maccabees and Josephus, and they don't necessarily agree with each other, but they're not uh, contradictory. That is, just because uh, we have Maccabees focusing upon the League in 161, while Alchemist is still alive, and then we have Josephus talking about a League after Alchemist is dead, um, you know, it it's not like, you know, it has to be one or the other. They both can be true. And and so that's the position that we've taken, is that there is a league in 161, but there's also a league in 158. And, yeah, there definitely is a change of leadership. People have, have died, and, and so... Um, So, yeah, maybe just renewing this league. But it's going to be, you know, the one is where they just kind of, I guess, go to Rome, send an ambassador to Rome, and just kind of make the league. There is not really any action out of that. But after what happened with Greece, then they renew this league. And and Greece is not going to bother them again, is the idea. So one of the things that we've done here, though, is we, we've looked at this league and we looked back at the original league and we had the 1335 and we had the 2001, all of these different symbols. And they bring us to 911, right? That is, they're going to bring us to the year 2001, right? That's what Stephen's chart had done. So when we just look at that again, um, gives us this information that says uh, there is a structure from this league that we have with the Gibeonites back in 1493 BC that connects with 1843 when the second angel arrives. And we have the 158 years, the 161, and the 1493 years, uh, all bringing us to 2001 when the second angel arrives. Right. So this, this structure, you know, is very interesting. Um, in, in what, what it's telling us. And it's, so it's connecting 161 BC with 158 and 1840 with 1843. So it's, you know, the August 11th, 1843 to April 19th, 1844. That's the period of three years there. <clears throat> What's uh, also interesting is in 161, that uh, battle, like when they defeated Nicanor. Yeah. It was on the 14th day of the 12th month. Oh, okay. So that would align with uh, Purim. 
So okay. I think that happened in 474 BC. So that would be a period of 313 years between them. Yeah, is it, or is, it, uh, is it 474 or 473? Um, uh, that's about that time, I'm not too sure. I think it's, it's the 12th year of Xerxes and he came into power in 486. So I'm just doing like minus yeah, 12. Okay. Um, yeah, I just can uh, get the calendar converter here quick. So, yeah, I know the decree is is issued, and then the decree is so it's going to be in um, the twelfth year of Xerxes on the uh, the thirteenth day of the twelfth month. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's March seventh, four seventy three. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the Julian calendar, and that's uh, the twelfth year of Xerxes, so it's 473. But um, so you're doing a count from uh, which date? Well, I'm just saying, what's if it's 161 years? If it's sorry, 161 BC. Then we'll give us a, a span of uh, 312 years. Uh, between yeah. them two. Yeah, 312 years between those. Okay. So interesting. Now, uh, but of course we have, that's when the decree goes into effect, right? Uh, yeah, well, that's when the, well, it's in chapter 8 then, after that battle, they win, and then you have uh, chapter 8, section 8, sorry, where the league takes place. It seems to be happening in 161. Yeah. Okay, because you're going to have, um, yeah, the decree is issued um, uh, the 13th day of the first month, April 17th, 474. And then it goes into effect March 7th, 473. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so there's a lot of good information to, to understand uh the relevance of that league, one is it sheds light back on the past, back to um, the time of Joshua, right? And then that gives light on our path today, right? So dealing with 2001. And is there a league made in 2001 of the Jews with Rome? Would we look at what happens with spiritual formation? as somehow connected to that? I think we had me at that parallel. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we can see that this, this is applying to our history, right? And we know that, that our lines are connected to this, this zoom in on the arrival of the second angel. And so we're still technically in that 9-11 history, which is uh, the beginning of the Sunday night. So, so Rome, so we're going back here. Rome, there's this league made with Rome. Now, Rome is going to work deceitfully, right, in our history and, and in the ancient history. Now, um, so there's, there's lots here in verse 24 as well. So we can start looking at this. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil, the riches. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. So we know that this is going to be addressing. Uh, so we have this league with Rome. And, and this is talking about all of that history of Rome in that period of time. So. We know that Rome is, and, and I don't know if I agree with some of the things that uh, Uriah Smith says about this. Um, well, let's look at what Smith says about this verse. Um, before the days of Rome, um, just give me room. Uh, nations 
entered upon valuable provinces and rich territory by war and conquest, Rome was now to do what had not been done by the fathers of the fathers' fathers, namely, receive these acquisitions through peaceful means. The custom was now inaugurated of kings leaving their kingdoms to the Romans by legacy. Rome came into possession of large provinces in this manner. Those who thus came under the dominion of Rome derived no small advantage. They were treated with kindness and leniency. It was like, uh, it was like have the praise, it was like having the praise and spoil distributed among them. I think it should be. They were protected from their enemies and they rested in peace and safety under the aegis of the Roman power. To the latter part of the verse, Thomas Newton gives the thought of forecasting devices from strongholds instead of against them. Uh, this the Romans did from the strong fortress of their seven-hilled city, even for a time. Uh, doubtless refers to prophetic time, 360 years. From what point are these years to be dated? Probably from the event brought to view in the following verse, which is going to be um, the Battle of Actium, right? Um, so going against the king of the south. Now, I just, you know, finished watching some documentaries on that history. It's pretty interesting. Um, and we, we might look at that a little bit uh, tomorrow. Probably won't have time to look at that now. Um, so one of the things is this even for a time. Now, we already noticed that the word time, six times two times five times six is 360. So we have this symbol of time uh, dealing with prophetic time. Now, and as far as uh, against the strong forces or the strong strongholds or from the strongholds, um, we have this word um, in, in the Hebrew 5921. So this word is just an ayin and a lamet, al, upon, upon the or on the ground of, according to, on account of, on behalf of, concerning, beside, in addition to, together with, beyond, above, over, by, on, towards, or, or against, right? So it has a, lot, a wide variety of meaning, meanings that can be applied to it. Um, now, the idea is that from, we don't really see it uh, translated that way, from the strongholds. So... Um, but, you know, above, beyond, over, upon. So I'm not sure if, if that's really an important point. Um, I mean, it would be casting his or forecasting his devices against the strongholds is obviously different than from the strongholds. But both could apply to that history. Um any, anything else that anybody has in mind here that we see in verse 24? <clears throat> well, a couple of questions. Yeah. This segment that says forecast his devices. Yeah. Is that a good Hebrew translation? Okay, um, well, let me see here. Well, the idea there is more of weaving, like plotting, contriving, and, and that's for forecast, and then devices is also a contrivance, a con so uh, like a machine or a plan or intention. So, I don't know if it's a really good translation. Um, you know, forecast, I mean, literally devices, right? You know, it's a device, a contrivance. Um, but this is some kind of weaving of a plan. Well, the reason I asked the question is that the translators had this as an alternate Hebrew of think his thoughts. Yeah, I don't know if that would be a, a really good. That would definitely would not be a literal translation. Well, the other the other thing that 
has bothered me, and this this goes to the original translations of the King James. Yeah. For some reason, they believe that this portion, 1124, was fulfilled in 170 B.C. Yeah, so they're, they're going to connect this to... Um, uh, to the Maccabean revolt, right? Right. So, yeah, which I know. I mean, I know they had that bias at that time when they did the translation. Right. Which what which is why I'm always a little bit suspect of the translation, suspect of it. Um So, you know, so one of the things that we look at um, that I'm not sure that I agree with Uriah Smith has to do with this idea. He shall do that, which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. And, and he just says, well, this is just how they conquered. Right. So okay. we know enters peaceably. So this is Rome. Um, and, and the word there means security, right? So the, the way that there are, are conquering is they're providing security for these provinces, right? For these different nations around them, these city states that they're they're taking over. Now, of course, they do have wars as well, right? I mean, um, you know, when they go up to Gaul and things like that later on. Um, so, so it's not as if you know this is all just uh, you know everybody's welcoming them every time. Uh, but one is they, you know, they do develop into quite a, a, a military power. And and then they're not going to be just, you know, killing everybody. If if you invite them in, you know, you're you're gonna benefit. They're gonna build Roman roads. Sure, you're gonna have to pay tribute and all that type of stuff, but your economy is actually gonna improve. So becoming part of Rome wasn't a, a bad thing from an economic point of view. Um but when it says he shall uh, do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers, um, to me it's just kind of an, an assumption. So if we were to look at this, um, um, I don't know why it doesn't, we don't have any references here. Um, but, you know, where I think of is when I go to, of Daniel eleven thirty seven, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any God. So I think about um, things like that. That there is there is something here that this must have something to do with, because this is a tradition, right? So you know, probably a religious tradition is sort of. Um, now, when we deal with uh, Father. And fathers, I can't remember where that was. In Exodus 10, verse 6, and they shall fill thy houses and the houses of thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither their fathers nor their fathers' fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh, right? So this is Moses. And then you're going to have, um, I think that's probably the only other one that's fathers, fathers. And why is this not giving us? Okay, there it is. Okay, so we have these. It's the only other place there's fathers, fathers mentioned. Um, and he shall do, and he shall do which his fathers had not done. So, so Rome, right, which this is talking about. I mean, is this really what this is talking about it, in the sense of Rome is just doing it differently when it comes to conquering nations? Or would there be some other uh, point? Now, it says he shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil and the riches. So the idea here is that um, when they conquer a nation, that in a sense, what that the spoil is going to be shared with these people that just succumb to Rome. And, and, and the question is, is that what's being talked about?
But if that's what's being talked about, uh, is there some other way to understand this? Right. So if he scatters among them the prey, so the scattering, uh, this Hebrew word here, bazaar, and the prey, biza, and the spoil, shalal, and the riches, um, rikush, right? So there might be something in here that we, we need to understand of what this means. Um, and one of the things that this reminds me of is Isaiah chapter 8, because you got Maher Shalal Hashbaz, right? In his name, um, he has some of the same words in here, right? So uh, his name is made up of 4118, 7998, uh, 2363, and, and 957. Right. So when we look at, uh, we'll go here. So you got some related words. You definitely have the 7998. Right. So that's the spoil. Um, and the 967. Is it 967? I'm just trying to look back here. They have 957 and, and nine. So that 957 just here. Hang on. Anyway, reminds me of that verse. I mean, I can put those together a little bit later. Um, and it's going to talk about uh, the riches of Damascus. It's a different Hebrew word than the one that's translated as riches. But you have spoil. Um, Samaria so shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. So before the child shall know, shall have knowledge to cry my father and my mother. The riches of Damascus and spoil of Samaria should be taken away. So in Maher Shalal Hashbaz, he has this, this idea and his name means, um, hasting as he the enemy to the booty, swift to the prey. So, so we'd have to think about what that means. Now this is in the context of Maher Shalal Hashbaz. He's going to have his uh, this prophecy is going to be written on a mirror, right? So it has to deal with the chiasm. And um, we do see in this structure of, of, of what has been happening. So there's, there's something about this, this history that we need to understand that I'm, I'm not sure that I fully grasp it yet. So when I look at, um, Let's go here. Okay, so so the one of the things that we're going to have is we're going to have this 360 years, so even for a time. So there's something about this Battle of Actium which we're going to look at, and why is this period being marked? So because we're going to be marking uh, a history in the time of of pagan Rome, the Battle of Actium. Where basically it, that's what leads to Rome basically establishing its kingdom without the kingdom of Egypt. Now Egypt, it becomes part of the Roman Empire. And, um, and then this is going to be for 360 years that we're going to have this be marked in 330 AD. So we're going to try to understand why we have this 360 year period. <clears throat> And uh, so we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail tomorrow. But just what happens in 330 A.D.? Constantine moves the capital. OK, so he moves the capital. So so one of the reasons we're looking at at that period has to do with the fact that the capital is going to move from Rome to Constantinople or to Byzantinium. Right. Later on, called Istanbul, but right. So he's going to take the city of Byzantinium, he's going to name it Constantinople. He's going to move the capital. So, so this why this is why they say from the strongholds, not against the strongholds, right? So the strongholds is is really a reference to the city of Rome, 
and its its empire. And so that we would have to try to understand how this applies in our history as well. So we haven't looked at it. We're just first looking at, we know that it has some connection with our history. Any more thoughts on this point? I mean, we're going to look at it in more detail tomorrow. So we'll, we'll just try to, you know, nail this down. So we have this league. We have this action of Rome um, forecasting its devices from the strongholds for 360 years. So that's where we're going to start looking at. And then the Battle of Actium is going to be verse 25. And again, we're going to have forecasting devices. Right, so. Yeah, so you're saying that the, the, the change against the from is kind of, is there justification for that? Well, that, that's what I'm saying with with it. it it's not, I, I don't know if from is the right word um, because it, it's not translated as from, right? That is, that word 5921 means upon, on the ground of, right? According to, on account of, on behalf of. So it's not really from, right? It doesn't show that as any of the, the possible ways to translate it. Um, but there's still justification then to relate that to casting his devices from Rome in the sense even though it's not saying from Rome, you did sort of... Right. Yeah. So that's that's on account of, on behalf of Rome. So they're going to cap... So, so that this is is for Rome that this is being done but not necessarily from the city of Rome, right? That's not necessarily what it's saying, right? But but this is going to occur even for a time. So obviously the city changing places in 330 would, would still relate. So it would still end up marking that. But we're, we're going to try to look at this in a little bit more detail um, tomorrow. So that's that's kind of the focus it, tomorrow. So we, we dealt with the lead today. I think, you know, that's pretty clear. That we 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 can put 158 there, but we don't have definitive proof. And so now we need to understand what it is that's actually being done by Rome. What is being described that Rome is doing? And and I think part of this has to do with um, um, the fact that Rome is now an empire. It has an emperor, right? Now, that's not going to be till 27 AD on January 16th. So, right, as I mentioned before, yesterday was the 2050th anniversary of um, Octavian uh, being made uh, the emperor. They call him a prince of, prince of something, prince of, I can't think of the Latin word. Um, but basically, that just makes him the emperor. So he's called the first, the first person. I guess is what the Latin means. Okay, so thanks, Stephen, for your help there, and everybody else listening and Dwight. And so let's close with prayer. A dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. We ask for your continued uh, care in all that we do. Uh, help us in our study. Pray for. Um, your work upon our hearts and that we can understand these truths and be with each person bring us together again according to thy will we pray and ask in jesus name